His name's Epstein, and my name's <laughs> Didn't Kill Himself, <laughs> and this is the, the Kick and Ash Podcast. Podcast. We're here, man. We're here. We're here. Epstein didn't kill himself for all of you. That he did not. Haven't heard already. Then uh, Epstein, Epstein definitely didn't kill himself. All yeah, right, so yeah, I'm definitely on that bandwagon. <clears throat> we are winging it tonight, baby. <laughs> we are. We're kind of winging truthfully. it. Truthfully, we uh, had all the time in the world to prep for this episode and still <laughs> didn't. Why? Because you know us. We are lazy <clears throat> assholes. That is what we are. We came up with a topic <sighs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, 10, and, uh, 10 minutes ago. We're just going to loosely run with it. Yeah, we're just going to have fun, guys, because uh, we've been like, I think, I think, personally, we've been a little too scripted. Yeah. Up until this point. For all of you, you make right. me sick, you bastards. What are you smoking tonight? <sighs> uh, the warped... Cloud Hopper. Mm. First time with the Cloud Hopper. You smoked one a few weeks back. Yes, sir. And really liked it. Cloud Hopper is but fantastic. You said that you wanted to go work tonight. Yes. So I have several other warped, but I just kept coming back to this one. I have a pretty yeah. rare warped Lancero that I almost brought on. Oh, really? What's that? The Villa de Noob. Noob. Ooh. I does new, but why is it why is it so rare? Uh, uh, they stopped making them. Obviously, that's step one. But I don't, honestly, I'm not sure like the year and so forth that they quit making them. But <clears throat> what's it called? The Villa de Noob. You could probably look it up. It'll give you Villa. V i l l a. Mm-hmm. Day. And then N u b e. N u b e. Villa de well, Noob. You got to search warped. Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> That would help. It's a Lancero. Oh. Well, 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 well. Yeah, it'll give oh, us some information. It's almost now. there. Stand by. But I received it like probably three or four years ago. Yeah. And it was, I, it was pretty rare then. Okay. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's, been, it's been a while. Yeah, this half-quarter logicals from 2016. 2016, yeah. Ooh. Casper Cigar Co. Casper, Wyoming is the recipient of the latest exclusive from Warped. Last week, the store received the Villa de Louvre, which translates to the Villa of the Clouds. Mm. 7 by 40 Lancero. The cigars were made at El Titan de Bronze last year it's and Miami. sat for that's, a year in the factory's aging room. That's Kyle Willie, Gellis Willie Warped. Herrera's roots right there. Nice. Kyle Gellis of Warped did not return an email regarding further details. Cool, dude. <laughs> right, well, yeah, we're right definitely on. not smoking that tonight, but that might be something to. Uh... No, I don't know why we got into it so much, but either way, <laughs> yeah, I almost cool. brought that on. So yeah, so, so yeah, I'm we're smoking featuring Cloud Warped. Hopper. We're featuring Warped. He's smoking a Cloud Hopper. I am smoking La Hacienda, and this is a, I don't know, not quite a robusto, not quite a, I don't know. What yeah, is it's this? about like a Toro or yeah, yeah, Corona Gorda maybe something like that. But this thing is just satiny smooth. Yeah, we actually so compared these two, and like they're physically very similar cigars. Both are very, very oily. Yeah, uh, velvety. Have the Cloud like Hopper kind of looks Cuban esque uh, in the way that it's like, yeah, rolled and oily, and it's just I don't know. It's uh, it's super appealing. I know this has uh, this is all Nicaraguan tobacco, uh, which is all one hundred percent Aganorsa leaf. Yeah, so. We've already had some experiences with Aganorsa and mm -hmm. so forth, and uh, Warped use a lot uses a lot of uh, Aganorsa leaf. So yeah, definitely. I'm pretty excited to see this. But this is the uh, Corojo 99 wrapper, um, Nicaraguan binder. The filler is Corojo 99 as well, and then Criollo 98. So for my first try with it, and you said you really liked it, so yeah, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, and mine is. Um... <clears throat> La Hacienda is Nicaraguan, made at the Casa Fernandez factory as well. Nicaragua Corojo wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, Nicaraguan filler. So, probably a lot of the same profile. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Very so, excited about this. Not a bad price either. I think like one of these is like seven thumb odd bucks, which we're going to talk about tonight. 
No, we're not talking about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> totally no, fucked we, that up. We, we, not, we scrapped that one. Yeah, to do, we scrapped to that do one, this new one. 15 minutes before we started to do this one that we came up with 10 minutes before we started, which is our top five cigar brands. Talking about top five cigar brands tonight. We're talking about some goofy stuff in the news. Yep. And then we're going to debate the age old question Is a hot dog a sandwich? I'm not, we're not even going to talk about it now. Nah. I, feel like, I feel like we probably. Have, I think we have different opinions on this. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll dude. find out. Well, it was yeah, a hot dog a sandwich. Leave a hashtag below. Either hot dog is a sandwich or hashtag nah. Hashtag hot dogs ain't no sandwich. <laughs> 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 uh, I gotta get this lit up. Yeah, bro. Using my XO cutter. Still got it. Still going strong. Two weeks. I cannot complain. I paid $33 for it. Yeah, what a kick ass fucking cutter that is man I'm, i got mine yeah as well and absolutely love it it's like i was loving v cut and then i got this thing and now i'm like damn i just kind of want to fucking straight cut everything you know the draw is perfect that's for sure is this your first time with the uh la hacienda yes yep my first la hacienda i really liked mine but i had the corona yeah I honestly, when I ordered this, I got this in a sampler from foxcigar.com. I didn't, it didn't say the size of what I was getting. I was kind of hoping it was the Corona, but this isn't too bad either. I think this is probably only like a 50 ring gauge at the most. Yeah, I would say. I like what, uh, so what's really cool about this, <clears throat> um, the Cloud Hopper is kind of, so Kyle Gellis of Warped and his uh, brother Devin kind of collaborated on this. Mm -hmm. And they call it Cloud Hopper because of like, the time that they both been traveling. Yeah, really. You know, so I, I thought that was really cool. It's kind of like a nod to the time that they spend out traveling and so forth. But that is pretty cool. The Robusto, uh, which a traditional Robusto is five, uh, five in length by 50 ring gauge. And Kyle and Devin decided on five by 48, which is quite perfect. I like, yeah. I like the size. What you getting right off the bat from it? Anything, anything noticeable? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, uh, definitely creamy. It's got um, coffee, um, maybe like a little, like a graham cracker, mm -hmm. like cookie, and then uh, pepper for sure, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, this has got um, definitely some coffee. Um, I mean, I'm drinking, I'm drinking black coffee with uh with this right now so it's definitely like taking that coffee taste i have on my palate and just like enhancing it yeah uh, big time and then it's uh definitely smooth almost no pepper really for really? me i didn't get too much either on that i i i pick out like uh i call that more like a ginger snap because it has like this like tangy cookie yeah. taste to it that just mm -hmm. reminds me of a ginger snap and that like that stayed throughout for me which i hope mm -hmm. it does you too because that was amazing but had like other flavor profiles to it, so like yeah, pick up coffee or cedar. I mean, it was just it was it was great, very good. Liking this right off the bat already. So, first topic then. Let's get into it. Top five cigar brands. We've just been doing some top fives lately, and we just and we don't fucking care really. Yeah, <laughs> we were like people are gonna call us the top five podcast, and we're like, well, that'd be kind of catchy. But so. you know what? It's easy. It's fun. And it's fun. It's fun to do. I'm just gonna. Touch this just a tad, just because I. There we go. So I like doing top fives. I know you like doing top fives. Correct. They're easy for us to get done in a week or 10 <laughs> minutes before we start. So, top yeah. five cigar brands. I'm going to start it off this time. Number five, Drew Estate. I knew that would make your list. Honestly, I, I feel like it probably maybe should be higher, but. I've just been loving these other brands so much lately that I just couldn't, you know, if you'd asked me probably six months ago, Drew Estate may have been one or two, but I've just been smoking so many really good cigars lately from some other brands that, yeah, absolutely. you know, my recency bias is, is making me put them at five, but that's still a solid spot. And, um, I mean, they yeah, have it is. one of my all time favorite cigars is the Liga Pravada number no. nine. Love that cigar. Really love the flying pig. Uh, variant of it <clears throat> um had a chance to smoke the uh 
the lounge stick, uh, yep. the uh, box press. Lounge exclusive, yeah. Uh, number nine, when we were in D.C., that was phenomenal cigar. Um, you know, Willie Herrera's doing some blends for them that are just phenomenal. You know, yeah. I pretty much feel like there isn't a lot out there that I don't like from them. I'm not a huge fan of their infused line. If you guys have seen our Acid Cuba Cuba video. <laughs> You know, we're not really a huge fan of that, but I get why people like it. But uh, but pretty much anything else outside of that <clears throat> is is pretty good to me in yeah. my book. So um, yeah, haven't I'm not like uh, I would say if you count like Hoya as one of their brands, like I'm not the hugest fan of Hoya. It's okay, but um, Hoya de Nicaragua makes some amazing cigars though. Yeah, they do. I need to introduce you to some of the some of yeah. the ones I like. I've just had like the red and the black. And it's just always impressive okay. to me when you have a company like that. Yeah. That has so. I think that they're doing it right in the sense of you have a lot of companies <clears throat> that I don't want to name, but I think they stay under one brand and mm-hmm. then they just keep adding blends to it. And it gets to a point where it's like, is your is your brand getting oversaturated with right. just constantly putting out like blends? what do y'all not have? Right. <laughs> you know? Instead of branching <clears throat> out, so instead of you know, I mean, they 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 have their ties with Huey de Nicaragua, mm-hmm. their acid line. I think that they're doing it right, you know. And Jonathan Drew is one of the biggest players in the game for a reason, you know. Yep. And so for that, they are my number five. Number five for you. I'm just a little pinky. I saw that. <laughs> Which you can introduce the new way to hold a cigar tonight in the podcast. All right, this you, one's you invented that last night. Yeah, this one's for you, Joe. This is to make fun of one of our buddies, <laughs> Joe Fedaro. Yeah, if you guys haven't known, this is the uh, this is the only way we smoke now, really. Here at Kicking Ash, Joe always holds his cigars weird, so we just kind of make fun of him. It's not even super weird, but I think it's just because I hate Joe. Yeah, but I love well, he him does kind of like like one. He was like three fingers. Yeah, up, he had uh, three fingers on. Was it like this or something? I was yeah. like, how do you, what are you? like? And sometimes he's like, you know, spocking it. Yeah. Just straight like claw gripping. <laughs> so he invented one last night to kind of poke fun about that. Yes, son. So get uh, at me, Joe. See if you can flex on anything better than that. <laughs> All right. So that's really annoying to smoke like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. All right, so you're number five <clears throat> cigar brand, in your opinion, right now. For you, personal opinion. Well, let me disclose that my picks were picked based off of the fact of they they just offer so much in the way of what I like to smoke. Okay. Sure. This one has a couple other reasons mixed in with that. All right. Mm-hmm. So my number five brand was Fratello. Okay. I say Fratello because I have yet to smoke a bad cigar. They have a couple new ones out that, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to pick up and try and review and so forth. But I've pretty much had every other cigar and every one of them is phenomenal. Omar is from D.C. He's, I mean, it's our, you know, our hometown. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and their headquarters is also like two hours away from us. Holds a special place in our heart. It does. So Fratello is my number five. And it's just, you know, it's kick-ass to know that Omar used to work for NASA. Mm-hmm. And now he, he makes amazing yeah. cigars. Yeah, I mean. So they hold, follow your dreams, kids. Yeah. I mean, the, this year's, well, I guess it was last year's. Fratello DMV. Mm-hmm. The Virginia Fratello DMV is my favorite cigar <clears throat> that I've ever smoked. Yep. Went out and immediately bought a box. And for that reason, they're my number four. Fratello is my number four. Look at us. Excellent. It's like we it's like we were right in tune. Like you just knew to segue well, me right in. <laughs> make my number four easier. We yeah. semi talked about these things before. A little bit, yeah. I mean we obviously we smoke a lot of cigars together, so we kinda know. And we tend to like the same things, honestly. Like, yeah. we have pretty similar palettes, I think. True. Um, so, yeah, I mean, not, not much more needs to be said. I think you touched on it all, man. Uh, uh, Fratello's an awesome brand. Awesome. I love, I, they have, like, one of the best bands that, like, angled, you know. Yeah. Uh, that thing, that, that to me. That's yeah, just, I, I, I think they're, I think they're. Branding, their packaging. Oh yeah. I mean, I think they, I think they hit the nail on the head. They I mean, might be, they Omar, might be number Omar one. Omar captures his heart in yeah. every blend that they make. They might be you my know? number one as far as branding is like concerned. Like just, just. I wouldn't say it's my number one as far as branding goes, but 
they're up there. I, yeah. I do like their packaging. Especially me, if I, you look I really at the Sorella it. right now, where it's basically the same band, but it's just purple mm-hmm. and it says Sorella on it. I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's super, Very it's super cool. catchy. It's, you know, yep. aesthetically pleasing. What so about you your number that. four? My number four is Tatawahe. Ooh. Which I'm wearing the shirt of tonight. Oh, Saints nice. and Sinners. This was last year's. Nice. Uh, Tatawahe has a lot of various blends that are just absolutely amazing. Yeah. You know, the Tattoo Caballero is like a less than $6 cigar. It's like five, six bucks. Yeah. Um, Tatawahe, the Black Lancero, Petite Lancero. Is Love those things. One of my favorite Lanceros. Yep. Pete Johnson's just a cool ass fucking dude. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And honestly, you know, that's, I think that's, that's something else that appeals me. You know, I'll see brands trending or whatever. And I'll try a cigar, but I want to learn about the brand. I want to learn about, you know, the the face of the brand. Yeah. So I'll go and I'll look at a lot of that shit Mm -hmm. and I'll watch and I'll be like, these dudes are dudes that I would want to go and fucking hang out with. You know what I mean? These are the dudes that I personally feel their passion when they talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, Pete Johnson's one of those. So number four, Tatawahe. Tatawahe. All right. On to number three for me. Number three for me is Warped. Smoking Warps tonight. Hacienda. Cloud Hopper. <sighs> There's just they, they just have a great line, uh, uh, you know, great line of cigars. Um, I, of course, I'm going to help me out with just some of the ones. The, uh, the original Guardian of the Farm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just uh, really friggin' phenomenal cigars. And um, the Corto. 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 Corto's yeah. good. Corto's I mean, they do, man. They, they have... Yeah. They have so many blends. Yeah, you know I mean? Plus, I like, I like blends and brands that kind of tell a story. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they, you know, Kevin and, or Devin and Kyle did it with this. Yeah. You know, but it's just, it, it, it intrigues me as a consumer mm-hmm. for something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's cool to me. Um, but I mean, yeah, they, they make a lot of blends. And they do. And they're all I, just so consistently yeah, good. Right. I mean, there's definitely some that I like more than the others. Sure. But I don't, I don't think I've ever smoked a Warped yet. And I've yeah. been like, yeah, I don't like this. You know, and yeah. I've, pr- I've basically smoked everything. You know, I've mm-hmm. even had the Black Honey that was super praised. And yeah. I, I, yeah. I didn't think that was that great, yeah. honestly. God, I remember those. I like the number 44 by far. Black That's what I have yeah. the box of, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so number three for me is Warped, uh, just really, just for their consistency in making really great cigars. Yep. Uh, my number three <clears throat> is Crowned Heads. Mm. John Huber's very handsome fellow. He has a mustache I'm very jealous of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's just, uh, you know, and captures, like, I was just saying, like, that dude that I would want to hang out with. Yeah. That's like John Huber, you know? I mean, you watch mm-hmm. these guys on... Podcast. I just watched a podcast today with uh, Pete Johnson and John Huber. He was on Box Press with Rob Gagne. Yeah, Bo- yeah. Bovida. And just, I don't know. It's like, you know, it's, it's like all of, these, all of these people that are on my list, when you listen to them talk about their brand, like, it just, it ignites something inside of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, that, and see, that draws me to it. See Not somebody to passionate the fact about it. Like that, that. You know, Crown Head says some of the most amazing cigars. I mean, John Huber used to be like, uh, I was learned that in the uh, podcast, he used to be like a shipping manager for CAO. Oh, really? You know, and he worked for them for quite a while and whatnot. But, yeah. you know, I mean, it's cool to learn things about, you know, the people in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. And was... Crown Head just has, I mean, also a lot of lines. You know, the Lime mm-hmm. Periosa is one of my all time favorite cigars. You yeah, know, the the Los Calaveras that they come out with every year is always fire. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just I don't know, just it's just one of those brands. You know, it's just they're doing everything right in my book. Well, keeps drawing me back to them. I have to say that I agree because my number two <laughs> was Crown Hits. <laughs> so assuming you're not going to collaborate much on that, I would say my number two is Warped. So yeah, is it? Already, yeah, we've already covered that. We've talked about each other, so so I had. It's funny you had Warped ahead of Crown Heads. I had Crown had, Heads ahead we had of Warped. Three of five. Yeah, of the same brand. Yeah. So yeah, Crown Heads, man. I mean, uh, 
simply on like for me, um, just like again, yeah, the 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 branding, the the message uh, when you know the fucking the Headley Grange, the fucking yep. Las Calaveras. Um, God, that 2018 one is so freaking good. Mm-hmm. I love that cigar. Um, <clears throat> I still got one in the top shelf of my humidor that I'm like waiting for yeah. the perfect time to smoke. Maybe when we feature crowned heads on this. Yeah. But yeah, dude, what do you say? Like, I wanted, I wanted to make a cigar how Led Zeppelin sounds. Mm-hmm. It tastes like Led Zeppelin sounds or something like that when yeah. they made the head. Like that's, I mean, that's just you know. That just kind of embodies something that I can relate to. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Number two, Crowned Heads. Totally agree with you on their uh, awesomeness. So I believe your number one is next. Is my number? Wait, didn't I just do my number two? Don't you? Well, oh, you did. Your number two. Yeah, so my number two is warped. Yes, yeah, so we're not gonna spend any more time on that. All right, so number one for me. Joey already knows this by now. He knows the answer to this. Sure do. Is a uh, Southern draw, and uh, probably you know this. This is the one that for me, I truly do really feel the passion of the company behind it. Yeah. When I see interviews with Robert Holt, um, and just to hear him talk and like to hear him, uh, you know, talk about his brand and and how authentic he is and how like wise he is and just how, uh. Like, um, just, you know, on point with everything, man. Like, he just seems to care. You know, he always talks about traveling around to each, you know, different shop. Yeah. I think that's really cool. On top of that, the cigars are friggin' phenomenal. Um, uh, you know, I just, I love Kudzu. I love the Rose of Sharon. I love the Cedrus. I mean, the, you know, just all of them. Fantastic cigars that I've had. Um, and they have one of the coolest brandings. Yeah, I think out there too. Yeah, I like their branding. Their it's branding like is so on point. The cigars, simplistic, but it's like just elegant. Yeah. They have elegant looking cigars. Yeah, super awesome name, Southern Draw. Like you know, we're kind of in the South here in Virginia a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like I have, I got family. You know, in Georgia, all throughout the South. So yeah, man, I can't say enough about Robert Holt and Southern Draw cigars. Um, just uh, if you haven't tried them. Definitely pick one up. You can't really go wrong anywhere. Yeah. Um, I tried that. Uh, what was that, too? The uh, the Firethorn mm-hmm. uh, Lancero. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. The Axle. Yep. Yep. Phenomenal. So in the draw, I had a few different brands that I was, like, debating on making my, my number five. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I feel like I have so many favorite brands, but mm-hmm. it's, like hard to narrow down like a straight five you know what i mean so of course the, the last one was is like the trickiest one i feel like you know if you're yeah. doing like five but southern draw almost made it in there you know mm-hmm. i mean i just saw something uh yesterday or today uh where somebody posted like an issue that they had with a couple southern draw cigars <laughs> we always get that on video <laughs> uh, it's all good, uh, guys. they had like a issue with a couple <laughs> southern draw cigars or whatever and robert himself commented on it i mm-hmm. was like please let us know blah 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 and i'm like you know, you don't you don't see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it's you're just, not you're not gonna see a fucking yeah. store manager of a Walmart hop on a post that somebody's shitting them right. all over, you know, and then <laughs> you know, like, try Let to me correct fix it. it. Yeah, you, know, you don't see that. So I mean, you know, you mentioned about the passion and so forth. It's it's very fucking Yeah. It's pretty clear cool, man. that like, it's out there, you know. I was I was smoking the Rose of Sharon one night and, and posted it up on our page and and Robert just messaged me and was like, Hey, I'm ending tonight on a rose too, you know, just like Cool stuff like that. Just reached out and just showed us some love because he saw that we were showing his brand love online. Right. Um, I mean, that's just that's just something you just can't replace as far as like, you know, now every time I smoke one, I feel like I'm like. That's the kind of behavior that makes the industry grow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like I'm part <clears throat> of something, you know? I, I got a chance to hang out with Robert at an event. It's even cooler in person. Yeah. You know I imagine. I mean? Well, I'm hoping in the future that that, that can happen. For us again, so yeah, for sure. So you're number one. <laughs> he already I knows. Already, it. I know what this is. The majority of people that know me already know it. Nat Sherman. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Nat Sherman. <laughs> My number one cigar is Caldwell. Why would that be? Well, aside from the fact that I simply have a man crush on Robert Caldwell. <laughs> 
Uh, no, I mean, <clears throat> it again, it comes down to that story. I mean, look, I have not had, and I've smoked so much, even older shit, uh-huh. that, uh, you know, back in his impromptu days that he used to do, some of this older, hard-to-find shit that you can't get anymore, I smoked. I've never come across a cigar that gave me bad construction. Always consistent flavor. The branding is fucking spectacular. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's what originally drew me to it first. I mean, look at that. Look at the fucking, look at the branding. You oh, know? it's awesome. I love it. And, <clears throat> you know, his story is great. You know, just seeing how he came up and, you know, he did all of his stuff with Impromptu and came out and did his own thing, you know. And mm-hmm. it's just, I don't know, his story is great. He has a lot of passion behind it. Um, and, you know, what really drew me to him is that the first interview I ever saw, mm-hmm. Robert Dew. He says fuck about as much as I do. So, gotta love the guy for that. Always love a guy who just curses for no reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what drew you to me, buddy. <laughs> what would you so, say is your favorite Caldwell cigar, then? Uh, the Last Czar is definitely my favorite cigar, hands down. Yeah. It has been for quite a while now. Yeah. It used to be the Savages, but I don't know, man. The Last Czar just mm-hmm. packs a punch. I feel like there's a lot of similarities between the two. Yeah. But Savages is probably like... Yeah, I mean, probably, I feel like my 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 favorite cigars always fluctuate. Yeah, damn near from week to week. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But the, the last star has been number one. I think one you've been pretty consistent with that. I think for me on Southern Draws and mine, mine's probably the Rosa Sharon. I would say that's so. such such a unique cigar that's just so freaking good. Such a consistent, the good cigar. Every time I smoke it, I just re fall in love with it so so yeah there it is our top five brands top five brands brought to you by no one because we have no sponsors yet but we'll get there buddy we'll keep plugging yep. away at it paulie i'm looking at you <laughs> <laughs> so uh <laughs> what are you uh about the first third i know you ash so yeah i'm not sure how deep you you are into well, it but yeah yeah i'm about the first third in i'd say um haven't had really any like transitions as far as the flavor. I'm still getting like a a cocoa. I definitely see like where you're getting that like almost like cookie, like uh you know like you said ginger snap like yeah um you know maybe a hint of like a cinnamony you know type of flavor. Mm-hmm. But um it's very consistent with the coffee and cocoa for me. Again, I am drinking some coffee with it. Um, so that's kind of bringing it out for me. But um, it's still just a yeah, you know, very medium cigar, medium bodied. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm really liking it so far. Again, warped, always doing their damn thing, and never letting me down. Here's a question I have for you: When you think of medium body, light body, full body cigar, and this is just strictly out of curiosity, mm-hmm. what do you think of? Do you think terms of strength? Do you think of flavor? What do you think of when somebody says? <sighs> this is a full body cigar. Right. You think what? Uh I think just like uh just like a really heavy flavor to it. You know what I mean? Like it's almost like uh yeah. you know, kinda like um you know, a very heavy smoke. It kinda lingers on your palate a lot. Yeah. The flavor's kind of very like right there. Sometimes it's like, you know, almost you know, overpowering. Yeah. Every time you draw. So that's why I think of like a full First, like a, you know, a medium just being like, again, kind of the in-between of that. Right. And then a light body just being like, you're almost like struggling to, you're not struggling to find the flavor. It's just not right there in front of your face. Yeah, it's just, it's just mild. Yeah. You know. The smoke is much lighter. Um, That's funny. Like, I used to think of it in terms of like, oh, just all Connecticut's are light and all. Yeah. Um, Maduro's are full, you know what I mean? Like, but it's not really the case. I smoke some really, like, super flavorful but, like, lighter body Maduros, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that aren't as super overpowering. Um, So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. Would would you agree? Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. That's honestly the reason I asked you is because I saw that on the Box Press uh, uh, podcast today that I watched. Mm -hmm. And it made me think. I was like, you know, that's actually a good question that you don't really see get asked around a lot because I right. think that a lot of, a lot of times people's perception of like full body is this is going to be a nicotine bomb. 
or as we like to yeah. call them, headache bombs. A headache bomb. You know, um, <laughs> but you know, I mean, that's the reason why I wanted to, to ask you that because when I think full body, I think that you know, not as much in terms of nicotine as right. terms of flavor. You know, it's like when you get that cigar. You've heard me say before, it's like a creamy smoke. Mm-hmm. It's a chewy smoke or whatever. Like the the smoke is almost sticky. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's that's like what I consider to be a full body cigar. You know, like I'd say this is probably more along the lines of medium. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of flavor, like they're there. It's very flavorful. It's very good. But it's not like you know you still taste a lot of tobacco it's just still a little bit more on the mild side mm-hmm. you know so so yeah. that, I, I thought that was interesting when he asked that so it, it definitely like, you know, is you don't really ever hear i don't even like on that. sometimes uh, i don't even think of it in that you know people always categorize cigars that way but i don't really think of them yeah i never really do that in that either. way nah. i always think of more of just the flavors i get because mm-hmm. like to me like i just you know i tend to gravitate towards maduros and darker cigars because to me, I just get more flavor that I enjoy. Which is interesting yeah. that your number one still has Connecticut wrapper. Yeah. Yeah, because that is like one of those Connecticut's that you yeah. smoke, and it's not like that other Connecticut's. Connecticut, it's yeah. got this like pepper to it. It's got this like deep, rich flavor to it um, that just you don't like other, you know, sometimes I smoke like, I've smoked a couple, I'll leave the names out of them because I don't want to trash anybody, but like. I smoked a Connecticut recently that I was like, this thing is completely awful. And oh, I was never... my father? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say it. But yeah. One of my um... favorite cigars. <laughs> I was nah, like, I, I don't like it either. Yeah, it was just like, it just tastes like burnt leaves to me, yeah, man. It didn't yeah. even have any flavor. I agree. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's the cool thing, though, again, about cigars. I th- I'm pretty sure we've addressed this before, but. It, I mean, that Connecticut is probably, I mean, dude, we, we got comments on the Kick and Ash page on that. Well, there's a lot of people saying, oh, that's my favorite Connecticut, or oh, I really love that Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, that's cool. Yeah. Because, I mean, everybody's palate is different. I mean, yeah. I was the same way. I didn't think it tastes like burnt leaves, but it just tastes like tobacco to me. Yeah. Just pretty much all the way through. But it just. It sounds you know. complex. I think that's like what yeah. I like, is I like a more complex, like, yeah. kind of like. Uh, you like, know. I'm okay with a, 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 you know, a little note that I'm picking out being yeah. like consistent all the way through the cigar. But I want to be able to pick out other things as well. But if what I taste at the very first, you know, very mm-hmm. right off the bat puff off of a cigar to the very last one, yeah. and it tastes the same, I'm probably never going to smoke it again because it's so boring to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to I wanna smoke, um, or I, I like to smoke, like, cigars that have... Uh, 90 like, ring gauges? <laughs> some headache bombs. No. Uh, and uh, that's a, that's a uh, patent pending... <laughs> Trademark, yeah, nobody, trademark term. Nobody can use that. <laughs> um, I want to, I, I like to smoke cigars that have like real huge transitions in the flavor. Mm-hmm. I always like when a cigar almost tastes completely different at the start than the finish. Sometimes I like yeah. the flavor to be consistent. If I really like the flavor from start to finish, I'm cool with that. But I do sometimes, you know, when I'm, when I have that transition, it's almost, uh, uh, you know, more enjoyable just because I'm picking up on a whole different flavor. Yeah, you for know? sure. So for sure, uh, the complexity is is what I like. So, so <clears throat> you did you talk about what you're picking up on your show? I did, I did. Well, you haven't I'm talked about what you're picking up on yours. Going to talk about mine. So the burn's pretty straight. It's uh slightly wonky right there, but that's burning down. So otherwise, I mean, I haven't touched it up any. Um. So that means good construction to me, you know. I mean, the ash is hanging on pretty, pretty tight, and mm-hmm. you know, again, I say this all the time. I'm not really like a long ash guy, so you know, once I feel like it's going to go, I just tip it, you know. Yeah. But um, I definitely get like a vanilla. It's creamy, it's still very, very spicy, which I really, really like about it. Uh, it's just a creamy smoke, not like like I just said. It's not like a full body, thicker, mm-hmm. chewy smoke, but it's just it's just a creamy smoke you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to explain that but it's like a texture feel in the mouth type of deal but yeah so far really enjoying it and i meant to pull that ash tree over here so i could ash ash and just didn't (laughs) (laughs) all right so what else do we talk about today um did you hear about are we uh, we going to talk about the uh, caldwell Cigar do, uh, Dojo release tomorrow? Is that what we're talking about, buddy? Uh, or the 6th? Yeah. 
We can we can talk about that. Um, no, that just it comes out. It's released on. The yeah, we talked. I mean, we talked about it a little bit last week. <laughs> yeah. So two days from now, two days. Cigar Dojo and which I'm gonna fucking miss it, dude. I know I'm gonna miss it because I thought you gonna, was, you gonna get on and get some. Yeah, but yeah. I thought it was today. Mm-hmm. And then you reminded me it's the sixth. And then I just said tomorrow. Do you know how much they're gonna be yet? No, I don't care really. Yeah. Um, we'll check them out. He's like, I don't care. I ball out. I got money. It's like I'm pretty fucking cool. Did you hear about this, dude? No way, dude. Cool Hand Luke eating challenge kills man after forty second egg. How many eggs do you think you could eat? Well, apparently you can't eat more than forty two, or else you'll fucking die. Listen to this. Listen no. to this. Okay. Golf News reports that Subhash Yadav, that's this man's name, forty two. He was oh he was forty two. Also, this is the irony. Died after attempting to eat 50 eggs in the Jampur district of Uttar Pradesh, India, on Monday. That yeah, would be something they would do. According to police. <laughs> That's just because our co-worker. Yeah. It's an inside joke. According to police, Yadav and a friend were at the, I don't even know how to pronounce that market, getting a bite to eat. When the two began to argue, the subject of their conflict is unknown, but it somehow <laughs> escalated to Yadav betting his companion 2,000 rupees, which is a little over $28, <laughs> that he could down 50 eggs there and then. The duo purchased 50 hard-boiled eggs from a vendor, and Yadav said to it, he was making good time up until his 41st egg. When he popped the 42nd egg into his mouth, he fell unconscious. No way, dude. Yeah, dude. This dude died. I'm trying to. Eat yeah, but it can't uh, be because of the eggs. Well, it's not. I mean, it, 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 yeah, they said he died. Doctor ruled that Yadev's death was due to overeating. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, look at look at this guy. And look at you, bro. You could definitely take in fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but wait, you can't even see a picture of the guy. Dude, scroll up. That's him right there. He's shoving fucking eggs in his mouth. No, dude, that's the Joey Chestnut from the hot dog eating contest. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's Look, not... <laughs> I don't watch that shit. I thought that was the guy. Yeah, this well, we don't Joey know. Chestnut, the whitest dude in the world, is from India. <laughs> well, yeah, but if you pay attention, nobody that is a competitive eater is fat, dude. Yeah. I still think you could take in 50 eggs, or at least that 42nd, man. I don't know, dude. You got the how, wider neck to, how, to fit the eggs. You'd how like, much would like it one cost of the lizards you? That just yeah. fucking <laughs> has their neck all fucking. So I got all fifty of them here. All right. <laughs> so, so listen, I got all fifty eggs in my fucking neck. Look, and then as soon as you went to go swallow them, you'd fucking just your whole chest yeah. would explode. Yeah, no shit, dude. <laughs> Have you ever have you ever eaten like something you that you know is not good for you? Forty-eight chest and a forty-nine neck. That is <laughs> just, true. I'm just kidding. I love you. Uh, <laughs> have you ever like done something like when you know when you're like you're eating? For me, it's always the flamethrower whopper from, <laughs> from Dairy Queen. I'm always like, this is probably one of the most unhealthy things because I always add yeah like extra sauce. I throw my fries on top of it. I get like a third patty. A third patty. <laughs> I take off all the vegetables. You make the buns other flamethrower whoppers. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. Chicken tenders. And I always eat it. And every time I take a bite and I swallow it, dude, I just feel clogged up in the middle. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that's what, like, uh, clogged arteries are, like, maybe, feeling like. Dude, maybe maybe he could only eat 42 eggs because he was 42. Maybe you can eat the exact amount of eggs as your age. Mm. But one more and you'll die. Well, or exactly. Oh, no, it looks like we know what we're doing our next uh, podcast episode. <laughs> Not we're gonna, eating we're gonna, I'm going to eat 29 eggs and mm. see if I live. Young blood. So, uh, what else do we got, dude? We got. You, you said the fat neck thing. Winging it. So, I wanted to ask you. Yes. If you were to create a cigar brand. Yes. What you would name it. This was a question somebody else actually asked in our uh, Facebook group. And I thought it was pretty interesting, and I just want to see what this chooch comes up with. So, uh, my, yeah, I mean, if you, if you, he kind of alluded to what I would choose for my name, which I would, I would definitely call my brand Fatnecks. I've always wanted to fucking open a bar called Daddy Fatnecks. Yep. And just, just have a bunch of fat neck dudes working there, dude, you know? <laughs> just fucking, if you got a fat neck, you want to come down and shove some fucking... 
good ass food. Forty two eggs down your throat. Fucking our premier sandwich would be an open faced roast beef with fucking <laughs> eighteen corn dogs on top of it. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fat neck cigars would be cool too, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, like for sure. Fucking I don't know, like if you could you know we'd have like a fucking custom fat neck shape. Where the cigar just came and then it just went. <laughs> 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 no, but it would, you know, fat necks would be custom fat neck yeah. shape. I mean, we talked about, it, dude, it would be the perfect brand to have our oil filter cigar. You yeah, know? we've talked about a specific cigar. <laughs> yeah. We're talking like a four, four, four by ninety, four by ninety, just fucking and, uh, tuna can, and, <laughs> and calling it the oil filter cigar. Yeah. And you know the sad part is that somebody out there would be like, oh, I'd definitely try that. Smoke them if you got them, brother. Smoke them if you got them, brother. What would you, what would you call your uh, cigar brand? Uh, so I already told you, but in jailbreak cigars. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned I was in a band in high school, and uh, we just played like house shows and shit, but we had a lot of fun times. That's when I was like experimenting with drugs and shit and just, you know, don't remember any of it. But yeah, right. You know, I mean, it was a fun time, and I always a place in your heart. Always like that we were called the jailbreaks, so that word and that name just kind of stuck with me. And uh, I'd probably, it's you know, pretty solid name. Little little nod to that, just jailbreak cigar company yeah. or so forth. And, mm-hmm. You know, I was in a band called Relentless. Were you really? Yeah. What was the stupidest band name that you ever were a part of or thought of? Ah. Uh, Cause I have one. <laughs> uh, well, not the stupidest, but one of the best was that me and one of our buddies, John, we always said we should be in a band called Stepdad. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, but that's a good one. <laughs> but um, bad ones, dude. I can't even remember the name of this band I was in that did like Norwegian speed metal. <laughs> yeah. I can't even remember if we had a band name. It was, I think, it was like this. some sort of dumbass fucking European Nordic fucking word that like <laughs> I didn't even fucking understand and so like uh, I I uh, oh I think our band name was Maelstrom <laughs> 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 yeah like Maelstrom or whatever yeah I think that was our band name now that I think of it. yeah it's like isn't that like a fucking tornado or a fucking nah, cyclone or nah, some right, shit I guess dude so bad dude so cringe well, I was I, just I just wanted to be in a band so bad that I went along with it. Yeah. They were all older than me, so I wanted to fit in. <laughs> You're the one fat kid that shows up with an Ibanez bass. <laughs> nah, dude, I have my motherfucking one, dude. I have my motherfucking Red Jackson fucking uh, nice dude Strat dude. This Shredder. Was, I love that guitar. EMG eighty one eighty five. Yeah, it was cool. It was heavy. So I was a part of a band where we basically did plain white T covers. <laughs> Just play my tea covers. <laughs> well, I mean, so that's kind of how we started. I mean, right. we were just playing a lot of shit, and that's hey there, back Delilah, when like, and that's hey it. there, Delilah came out. Do they even have another fucking, song? Uh, yeah, I mean, they had a couple others. Um, I mean, I can't remember any of them now. I haven't listened to and play hey my tea since I was in fucking hey there, middle school. Lila, hey there, yeah, Delia, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what was I talking about? The band name. The band name. <laughs> And I, dude, so you know my buddy Moyer. <clears throat> yeah. He, uh, me and him came up with the band name Solemn Dreams with a Z. Jeez. Oh, so we thought flip. the Z would be fucking cooler, right? Right. So like, yeah, it's way dude, more edgy. Solemn Dreams. I was like, yeah, it definitely makes sense. But now that I'm like, not like 14. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm almost 30, yeah, I'm like, shit. yeah, that's the dumbest shit that I've ever <laughs> Why? been a part of. The cringe, dude. Yeah, and we would, we would both sing, but I was the only one that could play guitar good enough to do like actual covers. That's worse than Maelstrom, dude. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's not. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I was in another one that uh, they, this was the band that eventually became Fratello. Uh-huh. And I was with my brother in. Uh, and at first, our bassist, Ivan, Wanted to name the band Tattoos of Memory. Ooh. And I was like, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Because we had nothing Let's else to go off it. of for quite a while. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? But me and my brother are Italian, and Fratello is brother in Italian. So that's just kind of what we stuck with at one point. That's a good band name. Yeah, it is, which is also another reason why, you know, I have a special 
Always. place in my heart for Patellos. Always. That brother's no longer with me. So, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it's special. You know, when I first heard that there was a cigar brand that came out named Patello, I was like, no fucking way. I got to check this out. And then Patello just ended up becoming something big. So, yeah. But anyway, so 43X. <laughs> yes. Put your, put your band name down in the comments, either your embarrassing band name yeah, or dude. your fake band name that you just made up while you're watching this. All right. Only, we won't want only bad ones. <clears throat> All right. So, the final controversy. The argument to end all arguments. Bigger. Is water wet? Bigger. Only bigger. Than the election. <laughs> bigger than the enemies of This pleasure. one's going to get deep, dude. This one's, uh. It's going to get deep. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll see. No, just look, man. Let's go. The question is, is hot a hot dog, is hot dog sandwich? Is <laughs> hot dog sandwich? <laughs> is a hot dog a sandwich? And I am here to tell you folks that a hot dog is not a motherfucking sandwich. My fucking man. It's I, not. Did, I thought you were going to make the argument for it. No, dude. Well, shit, no, now no. I should just change my argument. Just to no, no fucking Make way, this dude. conversation more interesting. Look, man, here's, here's, here's what I want you to think about. While right now I say no, I'm going to try to sway you into why people mm -hmm. think yes. Okay. Okay. So, you have a sandwich, turkey, whatever, bread. Mm -hmm. A burger is a sandwich. I'll call a burger a sandwich. What? Yes. No. Yes. A burger is a sandwich, dude. Dude, a burger's not got, a sandwich. Dude, because you got your fucking, it, you still got your two pieces of bread. They're separate pieces of bread, okay? That's it. All right? It's not like a taco. A taco's not a sandwich. You know what I mean? <laughs> but hey, let's just, listen. Let's, here we okay. are. Okay. All right. I'm out. hearing you out. Okay. A yeah. Philly cheesesteak, while it's a sub, it's still a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. But a hoagie roll is shaped like a fucking hot dog bun. So are we saying that a hot dog's not a sandwich because of the fucking hot dog? Yes. Because yeah, but it's we a can't hot dog. say that, dude. What makes, a, you know what why makes a, it a sandwich let me, is the fucking bread, dude. Let me. <laughs> no, that's where your misconception. No, that's horseshit. This is because where your misconception. If you have a fucking sandwich with no bread, Jimmy mm -hmm. John's does it. And it's called a fucking unwich. It's just exactly. a lettuce wrap, yep, dude. Go ahead. And that's horseshit. An but no, I'm, I'm, you know still what saying, I'm still saying no. You know why it's not? Because when I walk up to it, I don't say, <laughs> oh, I can't wait to eat this sandwich. No, I said I can't wait to eat this hot dog. It's a hot dog. Well, yeah, but what are you going to do? Walk up and say, "Oh, can you I eat can't a hot wait dog? to eat this turkey and cheese." When I say when I say I'm going to go eat a hot dog, do you do you even do you just assume I have a bun? What if I'm on you know fucking low carb and I'm just eating it without a bun? What about the poor? Like people always post that meme about if you're poor and the hot dog is always on a slice of bread. That that's probably it. Sandwich. Well, you, you said it's one piece of bread, of bread though, and you, you said a taco is not a sandwich. So then what? A, well, taco's not bread, dude. It's all about bread. No, it's a bread, dude. dude. A sandwich. It's a fucking bread. A sandwich is too basic to be a hot dog, dude. dude. A sandwich can be as basic as just. Have just you seen ham? what Olive Garden does with those fucking breadsticks? It's a fucking breadstick, <laughs> but yes. they cut it into two. Well, that's a meatball sub. <laughs> and they put some shit. It would, and it's a fucking sandwich. Is a meatball sub a sandwich? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but a hot dog isn't. No, it's I not mean, a sandwich. Nor is a bratwurst. Look, let's hear it. Let's, let's look. I got this article. It's from hotdog.org. <laughs> <laughs> I think right. it's from the NHDSC, which I'm going to assume stands for National Hot Dog Society. SC <laughs> <DSC> Society. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I got Anyway, you. National Hot Dog and Sausage Council announces a... Sausage. <laughs> sausage. National Hot Dog and Sausage Council announces official policy on hot dog as a sandwich controversy. Okay. Limiting the hot dog's significance by saying it's just a sandwich is like calling the Dalai Lama just a guy. Perhaps at one time, its importance could be limited by forcing it into a larger sandwich category. No respect to, no disrespect to Rubens and others. But that time has passed. We therefore choose to take a cue from a great performer and declare our namesake, be a hot dog formerly known as a sandwich. 
So even if it was a sandwich a hot at one dog's time, never been named a sandwich though. Well, that's what they're saying. That I mean, I think they're being. I, I, I honestly, I, if there's a national hot dog council, I'm friggin'. Can we join that? A dozen reasons why the terms hot dog and sandwich are not interchangeable. Does ESPN broadcast sandwich eating contest? Dude, that's, no. that's stupid. It's the hot dog eating contest. It's horseshit. Yeah, with their own buns. If you were watching a great athlete showing off during a game, you wouldn't call him a sandwich. You wouldn't say he's out there sandwiching. You'd say he's hot dogging. It's also stupid. Boom. Three. Imagine being at the ballpark, the organ playing, the crowd cheering, a vendor walking through the stand saying, Sandwich! Get your sandwich here! They had a ham and cheese. It's a hot dog. No, he has a hot dog in his fucking hand. He's at a ballpark. It's America. Hey, he doesn't hey, have a ham and look, cheese. You can't get nothing better than a ham and Swiss. That's, that's about fucking... as American as it can get. <laughs> no, you want a sandwich. Dude. No. Dirty Harry would not have sounded nearly as ominous if he said, never ever put mayo look, on a sandwich. Nobody cares if, if Gary Harris is Amish. But when he said, <laughs> <laughs> Dirty Harry, not Gary Harris. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> when he said, never ever put ketchup on a hot dog, people sat up and listened. Dude, no, nobody listened. Everyone listened, dude. Do you nah, put ketchup dude. on your hot dog? Well, it depends. If it's like a no. fucking backyard ballpark or shit, yeah. No. But if I if no. I go out, like if I want to go get a fucking hot dog out, I just want mustard on it. Nah, son. Mustard. Mustard always. Onions. Mustard, onions. I'll do a little relish sometimes. You know, I'll, I'll take the Chicago style even. Yeah, I like those, some I like tomatoes, those some pickles. New York hot dogs, dude. Just hot dog, fucking mustard. Yeah. Well, you know? Yeah. But I'll do like uh, I'm. I'm gonna tell you what I'm. But dude, those hot dogs are different, man. You always go to the fucking cookouts, and people always got fucking ballpark franks, which are like fat and fucking just never taste like they're cooked. Mm. You know, you got to get that Nathan's. Nathan's Jane, dude. Nathan's I like them bratwurst, dog. I like dude. Counselors is fucking good hot dogs too, man. Yeah. Yeah, that little uh, trailer that sells the fucking hot dogs outside of the supermarket. Oh yeah. It's like a one dollar for a fucking Mm. best hot dog of your life. Comment down below with the best hot dog you ever had, and also if a hot dog is a sandwich. I'm still saying no, though. Just for the record. <sighs> That's fine. I said I was trying to make you see what others saw. If you won the lottery, you would say, sandwich. No, you'd say hot dog. You'd say hot dog, Arnie. No, you could change that. Give me your final tasting notes on that warp cigar. <sighs> Tasting the uh, hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> that might be for the corn dog I actually ate. Uh no, I mean burn's still good. Um not much has really transitioned. It's creamy smoke still pepper has been pretty I don't know about the one that you had, but uh the pepper and the robusto has been pretty uh relevant and yes, um that was same for front. me. Same experience for me. Um kind of like the sugar cookie, um little vanilla in there. Peppers, and then that's really just about it. You know, mm-hmm. a little bit of like cedar, maybe. Uh, it's got a little zing to it, but I mean, it's really fucking good. I I really enjoy it. You ready that's to give it sure. a uh, kick-ass donkey rating? Mm-hmm. How many donkeys out of five? Out of five, I would give it a four point five. Solid rating. Yeah, Solid rating. Sure. One puff, everybody knows the rules. <laughs> One day I'm gonna get on here. <laughs> And shit on that kid. <laughs> and let all you guys know what we say, like what we're talking about every time we say one puff, one puff everybody knows the one rule. Puff, everybody knows. We should just get him on, dude. We should get him on. Nah, I'll pass if on You're that. a fan, my guy. Hit me up. But until then, I'm not going to try to shit on him. Shouldn't shit on anybody, Arnie. You know what? Fuck you, bro. You do that We're all family the time. here at Kickin' Ash. We welcome everybody. Well, well no, that's not true. So anyway, <laughs> final uh, tasting notes. Final tasting notes for me. Still got that cocoa. Um, I'd say the flavors picked up. You know, farther in the cigar, just getting some more intense uh, uh, of those same flavors of that. Uh, you know, that cocoa, that that dark, rich coffee. Um, you know, maybe just a little bit of oak uh, with it. You know, like a mm-hmm. heavy, like uh, yeah. I got a, taste. I got a wood in mine. Yeah, you know, but I can't. I'm. I'm not like a big wood guy, so I don't really know. But like, I think of like a strong nutty taste. I feel like yeah. it's like more of like along the woody. Yeah, yeah. Note, but yeah, yeah, something like that. So we got pretty similar mm-hmm. profiles out of it. Maybe just like a tinge of pepper now, but nothing like major. It's still, um, you know, just very, 
very medium, medium to full, you know, in that range. So really digging it. I, I think I'm going to slap a 4.4 kick ash donkeys. That's good. Good ratings for. I'd say I like, I'd say I probably like the cloud hopper a little bit more than yeah, this. Yeah, the cloud hopper is phenomenal, man. I yeah. really like it. I like how the you know simplistic the band is. You know, mm-hmm. I like when uh, companies like Roma and Tatawahe and you know even mm-hmm. this particular Warps can just go with a simplistic fucking band. And it's yeah, just very traditional and looks classy. I like it. Yep. So that's that's probably it for us then, guys. We're we're ready to wrap it, it up somehow. We ended up making this right about an hour. We made it an hour. We wung it, wung it, <laughs> winged it, wung it. Wing, winged isn't a word. We winged I don't know. it. We no, wang it. Sound right. we, we wanged it. We wanged it. We wanged it, and we did it. And uh, we really have just <sighs> got to uh, start prepping for these a little bit more. Nah. But that being said, tell them where they can find us, Arnie. You can find us on Instagram at Team Kickash. Or search Kick and Ash and look for the Kick and Ash Donkey. You can find us on YouTube. Just search Kick and Ash. Hit the subscribe button. And then you can also find us. Are we on Twitter yet? No. I am. You can find me at Twitter. <laughs> we were. At the uh, Humble Humidor. Is that really it? That's my Twitter, yeah. The Humble Humidor. That's good. So, <laughs> uh, like, I like that. Eventually, name. we'll be on Twitter, but whatever. But uh, also, you I can promote catch my us. I promote the podcast on Twitter, though. Yeah, you can find so it on there. you can also find us on Spotify. Some of our uh, episodes are streamed there. But definitely check out our YouTube. Our podcasts are there. Uh, we post them weekly. Um, and then that's it, right? Yeah. Uh, don't it. check our Spotify because I haven't posted an episode there in a couple of weeks, but this right. week I'll catch up on them. Scratch the Spotify. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We don't have a guy that does anything for us, so it's just yeah. us. So It's just us. But uh, Sometimes it doesn't happen. Yeah. So uh, you guys know where to find us now. Uh, did you did you say Cigar Society too? You did? No. Uh, Cigar Society. Uh, that's a Facebook group that I started um, mm-hmm. a couple years ago, and uh, we're pretty active there, like a big family. So if you uh, are looking for a new group or just another one to add to your collection, check us out. Yeah, and then you can meet we'll all the you. guys that we talk shit on during the podcast. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but we do uh, we do some cool things in there as well. And yep. uh, hit, hit them with that. Hit them with that. Uh, hit them with that hole. I want that one last time. Ready? Get that in there. <laughs> all right, guys. Get that in there. With that being said. Christmas is upon us. Christmas is upon us. And, and really, with- I think that's just one of our biggest issues. We just keep talking about our Christmas episode. <laughs> We're just so excited for Christmas that we, we can't are. come up with any other ideas. But that being said, have a, have a kick ass day. day. <laughs> you should have ended with that, dude.